welcome to another installment of the Fragments of Silicon Reviews. Um, broadcasting on a Monday once again because Petty had a Digimon tournament to attend the other day. One thing that does seem to be consistent, though, is the Galax isn't here. Um, we're presuming that he's stuck in traffic or he had to do something um, on the way coming home from work. He is certainly not streaming with Mac today. Um, because Mac is streaming right now. It's just he's doing his Paladins thing. Um, anyway, um, four reviews up this week. Uh, the first of which is Brock the Investigator. Emphasis on Gator. Because, okay, um, this is the world's very first punch and click. Eh, I wouldn't agree with that. Um, in fact, uh, like, okay, the specific mashup here is, uh, f um, I would say, unique. But the idea goes back all the way to Indiana Jones and the uh, Last Crusade. Uh, the graphic adventure or the you know the adventure game and also indiana jones and the fate of atlantis also had the action path that uh you know those games tried to combine combat and point and click adventure gaming more on that in a bit because i'm like i think the same issues apply um anyway brock is a innovative adventure mixed with the beat-em-up and rpg elements in a grim world where animals have replaced mankind what kind of detective will you be um yeah brock is a narrative driven uh, game that blends action puzzles and investigation in never before seen ways will you use your brain or your brawn um in a futuristic light cyberpunk world where animals have replaced humans privileged citizens lived under a protective dome from the ambient air pollution while others struggle to make a living on the outside. It's your fairly typical cyberpunk uh, layout, honestly. Though I guess I do have to give credit for actually remembering the um, disparities between classes in this. A lot of modern cyberpunk doesn't remember the, um, the punk part of cyberpunk. But anyway, Brock... Private detective and former boxer lives with Grad, the son of his deceased wife, although he could never elucidate, elucidate the nature behind her accident. Recent events may shed some light on an even more tragic outcome, one that may be linked to their own existence. Will they be able to withstand the threats of this corrupted world and face their own destiny? Um, I suppose that is up to the player. And yeah, um, you can see Petty here. Uh, yeah, it's not for show. This is a legitimate uh, point-and-click adventure game mixed in with a brawler with um, light RPG elements, as in you do gain levels and you can increase your strength, uh, get more health, that kind of thing. Not particularly, you know, it's not River City Ransom here, but it is something. And what is it? Okay, so kind of been dancing around the issue for the entirety of the review, but I'll, I'll get to the central core here. Um, this was a ketchup and ice cream situation for me. You know, it's like, I like brawlers. I like point-and-click adventure games. I don't like it when point-and-click adventure games try to get action-y. Um, unless, you know... If you're trying to do the traditional kind of point-and-click adventure games, you know, solve puzzles, use item, you know, use the thing on the thing in order to open a door, that kind of thing. Like, it never comes together well, and I would say uh, it definitely didn't in this case. Um, you know, the brawling... Like, I will give uh, credit, the brawling is surprisingly deep. Provided you use the proper control scheme, um, you like this game is geared towards a controller, a keyboard, or you can even use the mouse. Um, the mouse is going to be really limited because you know two buttons. Like you, you'll be able to do basic punches, 
and you know moving that's it because there are other moves like there's a jump kick um like there's a block um there's like a super move like i said it, it, like on the brawler side of the equation it's very robust i will give it that on the point and click it's well it, it's a point and click um it, it it plays out as traditionally as possible there um i guess when you're innovating this much you you, you don't want to change the gears on too many things like uh as far as the story and the characters uh it is fairly grim but it's also lighthearted like as you'd expect a title with talking animals as the protagonist to be um and you might want to uh, i suppose it's also worth knowing if the brawler and adventure games ever intersect and the answer is they do actually um because there are times when you've got to break down a door um or you might get hit or the the part i stopped where there's this goddamn puzzle where you fail and you uh, get into a brawling segment but this is right after a uh, a stupid fucking platforming segment and I got hit, and I'm, like, down to 10 HP. Um, yeah, so an, uh, another thing about this game is you don't heal in the brawling unless you gain a level. So you've got to actually have, like, items to, uh, inc- you know, to revive your hit points. And, like I said, it, these are nice ideas. I just didn't think the execution was all that smooth or fun. Now, I suppose this is a subjective thing, but yeah, I'm like, this is like, and I played a lot of adventure games lately. Uh, I'd probably place this at the bottom of the pack. I know this game has its fans, um, but look, I just enjoyed all of the other adventure games uh, much more. Because you got to remember, adventure games isn't just gameplay mechanics. I mean, certainly some people play puzzle games for the puzzles. Um, you know, these adventure games for the puzzles. But that's, you know, that's never been the draw for me. Um, I think it's why I never really took to Myst and its uh, ilk. Because those were games were definitely a lot more pure puzzle based or their storytelling and characters were a lot more subsumed than you got in a king's quest or a monkey island you know it's like honestly what's really sells um adventure games for me are characters and story always have um and this game definitely has those but it it also really seems to be um, touting its gameplay innovations as well. And, you know, I can't really recommend it, um, at least from my point of view. Um, but I'm going to go with the subjective here and say, uh, at the very least, check out the, de- uh, the prologue. Um, this game, thankfully, does have a prologue, um, which functions as a demo basically yeah um anyway uh worth noting the game is fully voice acted um and uh, delivers a modern style like i do like the i do like the stylings here more than say justin whack which was the other um goofy modern uh, adventure game um and yes it, it it also has the waypoint finding that really should be sta- standard stuff these days. And let's see. 
in terms of pricing, so the game will clock in at nineteen ninety nine. And it's got a DLC in the form of the soundtrack for $4.99, the art book for $3.99, and the deluxe version for $27.52. And at $20, once again, play the prologue, because that's quite a few quid to be spending on an indie adventure game. And you, like I said, it's all solid in a vacuum i just don't think the elements came together um all that smooth but this is something that i can definitely see people disagreeing with me on and yeah i think that's about all i got on brock the investigator um be sure to tune in after the break as petty fan will be reviewing taco tom 2 <laughs> 